My name's Martin Welsh. I'm a full-time painter, and lately I've been doing a series of portraits. And uh, I'm really trying to not just capture a likeness of the person, but I'm trying to get a bit of their essence and a bit of their character and try and put that down on canvas. You know, tonight I'll be meeting uh, Ian Stables, a fearless shock jock, one of New Zealand's most well-known radio personalities and a judge on New Zealand Idol. Stables. Hi. How are you, mate? Hey, thanks for inviting me. Oh, no, no. Wish I'd actually got dressed up a little more. Oh, no, it's you're fine, mate. You're fine. It's a it's portrait. It's not a fashion here. I show. I feel like I'm in Manhattan or something. <laughs> well, this is Soka Gallery. And, Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. Look, take a seat and we'll All get right. straight into it. So you're adopted. Yeah, yeah, and I knew um, mum and dad told me from day one that uh, as young as I can remember, uh, you know, dad's, mum and dad said to me, look, you, you're adopted, it means that, you know, we love you very much and you're just like the rest of the family, but you had a different mum because and she was very young and she couldn't have you. It was actually a, a very young nurse and um, my birth father, an, uh, an Australian broadcaster, and it's very hard to not be overly curious about it, but, but, but to me, my, my parents are my parents. Yep. And, uh, you know, where I came from is, is kind of irrelevant to me, you know. But, yeah, mum and dad, oh, great, great parents. Are, like, you, great. Are, you, are you glad that they told you from the outset, right from the very yeah. beginning? Yeah, didn't, yeah. They didn't, I, I you weren't knew, like 13 at your bus, yeah. uh, Pittsburgh. I, I knew from when I could pretty much understand, you know, yeah. from day one. It was and, normal. And it became completely normalised, yeah. you know. Did you play sport early on? You know, I'm not very much a sporting person, uh, but when I was, when I was, I think I was about 11, I mean, mum, mum and dad thought it was good for me to actually get out and, and play something. So they joined me up to the Marnie United Soccer Club. I hated it. I just didn't even want to be there. Yeah, yeah. And if I woke up and didn't feel like playing soccer, and it was wet and windy like it was in Wellington, I'd, uh, I might add my voice broke when I was about 10. So uh, I'd, actually, I'd actually ring up to ZB. They go, hi, it's uh, yeah, Dave Menzies here from uh, Money United. Look, uh, it's a ground change or a postponement till uh, next weekend. I'd actually cancel the game, so I uh, didn't, didn't have to play. So, I mean, like that early foray into, into like prank calling, I mean, mm. could you... Could well, it, well, that kind I of mean, continued that, from there. I mean, I mean, why did from, you carry it on? Well, from there it went on to, uh, you know, this was back in the 80s, it went on to firewood, you know, being dumped. And, and uh, I used to uh, get bulldozers on people's property. And uh, I just became a, a bit of entertainment for the holidays, really. I couldn't wait to leave college yep. and actually get straight in. I had always had an interest in broadcasting. And back then, you didn't go to a, like a radio training school as such. You were a cadet and you learnt on station, you know. It was all live. There was no pre-recording, no systemation. You went on the air and you had to get it right. Now, I'm, I'm obviously not proud of it, but I have been arrested. On a number of occasions. Number of for, occasions uh, yeah, well, I was going to say what. A number once. of occasions. And I had a couple of colleagues that were going over to uh, over to Vegas, and they went to me. They went, uh, "Oh well, this trip's ours, not yours. See you later, stables." And I thought, "Oh, okay, all right." I had a little bit of itinerary. I thought, "Okay, well, I'll see if I can have a bit of fun with you." And uh, yeah, I, I just tipped off the FBI and the LAPD about some wildlife smuggling going on, and they they tend to view wildlife smuggling more than, than drugs, yep. you know, and there was the FBI there and the LAPD and the federal agents and they actually shut down a portion of Terminal 8 and I did it all on a phone. Yeah, I grab quite a lot from Stable's um, face when it comes to personality wise. He's quite, he's very open and I actually didn't think he'd be as open uh, as he was. So yeah, I, I've grabbed a lot of that and I'll remember that when I get back to the studio. Having a supportive family, now with you're bipolar. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a bit of that over the years. I mean, I have, I have been, been sick a couple of times, you know. The, the danger is, and I've, uh, I've been there, I mean, uh, I, I had a massive meltdown last year, actually, and I was off work for about 10, 11 weeks, and, and I, I made the classic mistake. And when you're on medication, you've got to have, a, you, you have to go for regular reviews. And I didn't go for my reviews. I was, I was too busy doing radio and doing TV shit here and whatever. And I began to get immune. When you, when you have bipolar, you, you are. You're this way and you're that way. And you require medication to keep you kind of in the middle. If you can imagine um, being in a shopping mall when you're a kid and losing your mum and how horrible, that, how scared you felt. 
then imagine being at home and you're lying in bed and you, you freak yourself out, there's like a ghost in the house, you know, and you're a kid. Um, take the most depressed you've ever been, take the most sad you've ever been, um, factor in a relationship breakup, a, a job loss, a marriage breakup, and being scared to even walk. Add that all together, mix it round, and that is a bipolar low. But it, but it is entirely treatable, you know, that, that, that's the whole thing. And um, once they, they, they muck around with uh, different combinations of medication, they can get it right. My partner's actually a clinical psychologist, um, which is quite ironic. It's allowed me to learn a lot about yeah. it, you know. But you can function, you, you, can, be, you can be a high functioning person, you, you can be completely, live a completely normal life, you know. And don't be a victim. Don't be a victim, ever. Stables. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. How's it going, Brian? I'm here for the viewing. The viewing, the reveal? Yeah. Yeah, have you been well, I hope? I have been. Yeah? I, and I, I've learnt to, to never, ever, you know, have a predetermined idea on anything here. I'm just gonna, we're just going to walk forward a bit. Sure. We'll stand okay. here. This will be for the dramatic effect. I'm going to put it on the easel, and I'm just going to walk back and we'll turn around together. Okay? Just turn around, mate. <laughs> just do it. Come on. Turn around. Go. Around you go. Hand down. <laughs> Come on. That's actually not bad. Oh, my God. Is that what I look like? It is. There was, there was one stage when we were talking yeah. and, uh, you know, you were going up. Let me, let me describe what it's sure. like to you when you're on a down. I've got to take a few of the eyebrows out. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. No, no, I did, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, right. there you, any, you, there... talk, you were talking about a downer, you know. You said, imagine yeah. your girlfriend's left you, uh -huh. your, your best mates died in a plane crash. Yeah. And you, you almost reminisced for a second and mm. then it's just like, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> That's right on the money, man. I'm looking at this right now, and I, I, I'm not sitting here cracking jokes and doing stuff like that, but that, that's exactly me. <laughs> that's exactly me.